What's up guys, CB Modi here back with another video and today we're here with a super cool utility. So from time to time we do take a look at software programs here on the channel but it isn't exactly all the time because let's face it, a lot of the time when it comes to software it's free, you can download it and it's pretty boring. However, today's piece of software is so much more interesting. So a lot of people out there want LEDs on their systems, but let's face it, LEDs are an expensive addition to a motherboard, and maybe we either have an old system that was around before RGB LEDs came out, like this guy right here, or maybe we have, well, a system that we couldn't just afford LEDs. For example, a basic 1151 socket motherboard can come in at around 100 Australian dollars, whereas one equipped with plenty of RGB LEDs will be coming in around that 200 plus Australian dollar price tag. But this is where we are gonna be doing some changes. Now recently an Intel developer tool accidentally leaked onto the internet or it wasn't so much of an accident, rather Intel posted it on their page but it wasn't supposed to be there. I'm sure by the time this video comes out it'll be totally taken down but I'll leave some links down in that description box. But essentially they've left their tool on there that allows us to go ahead and activate some diagnostic LEDs. Now every motherboard out there that has been produced with an 11 51 socket or the x99 socket on the Intel side has these diagnostics LEDs. Unfortunately for those on the AMD side doesn't exactly work properly but it still works but we'll get to that in just a moment. Essentially these LEDs are here for factories to go ahead and do their basic tests on the motherboard without having to drop in CPUs and do all the other stuff to actually get a motherboard posted. It allows them to go ahead and run all the tests they need so it can be delivered to you no problems. And whether we're looking at a basic board from quite some time ago or a super high-end motherboard, all of them will go ahead and feature these diagnostics LEDs. So today we're going to use our piece of software to take advantage of these LEDs to enable them and then we'll enable an RGB mode for RGB LEDs on our motherboard. Now do keep in mind that this is based on the 1150X socket and also to X99 sockets. It does work on things like 2066 as well as newer Intel sockets and also to some select AMD motherboards. But this is again mainly an Intel dev tool which is leaked from Intel accidentally, kind of on purpose. But either way, we'll get to the actual setup in just a moment. So first thing that we do need to do is take a look at our motherboard and see how many diagnostic LEDs are on the board to see whether it is worth it. Because this piece of software will take your motherboard out of spec and out of warranty. So if you are still in warranty, you may want to hold off for just a little bit or just watch the video through and then go ahead and get started. Now, usually these located around the CPU socket, the RAM DIMMs, and also to the PCIe lanes. As again, they correspond with these particular components on the motherboard to go ahead and allow developers and also to, I guess, uh, the manufacturers to go ahead and run all their tests before they deliver it to you. Now, if you haven't seen these LEDs before, that's probably for good reason, mainly because they're just deactivated and the code is never released to the public but the hardware is all still there. And thanks to again that utility, we're gonna enable that piece of hardware. So today we're gonna be looking at ourselves an old school 1155 board again. And as I did mention, most Intel sockets are supported. So we'll go ahead and jump over to the PC. I do have the monitor, the keyboard and mouse, as we can see right here, all set up on this side. That is running this computer because kind of got too cluttered over that side. Now one more thing before we do jump into it is we are running onboard graphics because I do want the PCI Express area to be clear so you guys can see the LEDs. And also too, we're running like a single RAM dim and no fan on our cooler because again we want to have as much of the motherboard exposed so this is the most little amount of hardware I could actually put on it. The cooler itself is the Arctic Esports one that we did check out in that video right there. Really really awesome. It is running a little bit on the warm side but we'll deal with it just that. So first thing that we do need to do is jump over to the Intel website and as we can see right here we're going to scroll all the way down to the end of this page. Now this particular page is more about diagnosing a motherboard but as we can see right here they've accidentally left their full diagnostic system right here so we're going to go ahead and download that. Now again by the time this video does come out I'm sure this article will be pulled down and Intel will not be very happy that it is out there, but I've gone ahead and made it available. Check that description box if you want to go ahead and download this piece of software. But let's go ahead and take a look. So once it's downloaded, we're going to move it over to our desktop. I've just gone ahead and chucked it in a folder uh, so I can easily move it around. Yes, I did say to put it on the desktop, but I've put it in like a folder called Desktop, uh, mainly because my desktop is full of rubbish. So we've got ourselves here. The Intel LED Tester V1.3.3.7 is what we're going to be using here today. Now, again, I've just downloaded this guy. It is five kilobytes, so it is really, really small. Essentially, what we're doing is just patching a piece of code to the BIOS. Really, really simple. So what we're going to go ahead and do is actually just launch that guy up and 
just while that goes ahead and fires up, essentially, as I did mention, what we're doing is just patching a piece of code to the BIOS. So, as I did mention, all the hardware is still there, but the motherboard doesn't know that this hardware is available. So, the software we're using tells the motherboard the hardware is available. So, as we do see right here, once we do jump into the program and we are here on our little command prompt window, we do see the uh, main menu of this system. Now, because this guy was developed for internal use, it isn't exactly going to be having the world's uh, best user interface. Let's face it, it's a command prompt setup and uh, it's meant for internal testing. Now we do see that the text actually is pretty straightforward. We have our Intel LED Checker 2017 internal use only, but well, it's no longer internally used anymore. And the first thing that we do need to do is actually check whether our motherboard is supported. So first thing we'll go ahead and actually do is hit number one on our keyboard and we'll hit enter. And as we can see, it has detected the motherboard. So we have the Gigabyte GAZ68MA-D2H-B3. Now, lucky enough for me, the name is very, very accurate. It usually is pretty accurate uh, as to what motherboard you are actually using. So again, it reads off the BIOS and then patches it in and it can actually see what it is there. Now, if your motherboard doesn't show up in this, don't exactly worry too much because the process will probably still work. However, it won't be 100% successful. So for me, I'm just going to hit M to get back to the menu. And yes, indeed, uh, all of the features will be available for me because again, it did show up on the screen. So next up, what we do we need to do is basically patch it through. So we're going to go ahead and hit number two to enable the LEDs and that will bring us to the LED menu right here. Now it does go ahead and say, are you sure you want to go ahead and do this? It will take it out of warranty. This process is instant. So as soon as you do hit go, it's going to go and there's not much else we can actually do about it. So we're going to go ahead and hit yes. We're going to type yes on the keyboard and boom, it goes ahead and loads through and it is done. Again, a very basic user interface, but nevertheless, it has been done. We're going to hit M to return to the menu and you may notice nothing's actually changed on our computer. That's mainly because we've told the computer that LEDs are there, but now we've got to tell it what to do with those LEDs. So we're going to need to go ahead and type in this rather long string of code. So what we're going to do is actually hit number four on our keyboards to go to the error test. Because this actual diagnostic LED system is based on errors, what we want to do is send a loop of errors to the CPU, the PCI Express and the RAM section. So what we're going to type is Intel. Uh, do bear with me because I'm going to have to type this off the teleprompter. So Intel and then we go ahead and do R1212. So this is the 2012 release of this uh, with our PD2 L underscore PCI, and then we have one, then we have CPU one, and then also to RAM one. So basically, this is throwing loops in the PCI Express, the CPU and RAM, as we did mention right there, and we are running the 2012 release. Now you may notice that software is 2017, but 2012, I guess, Intel. Now, if you want to do some other things like set solid colors and those kind of things, do check that description box. I've got like a list of commands that you can use down there. But basically, we're going to be using this top one to go ahead and enable the kind of cycling LED effect. We're going to hit enter. It's going to load up and boom. Would you look at that? We got some LEDs going on our system. Now, I'm pretty sure it's going to show up in camera all right, maybe a little bit dim, but we do have some pretty sweet looking LEDs around the CPU, PCI Express, and also to RAM area. So we can go ahead and hit Y to go ahead and actually we're going to go ahead and hit Y to enter more. We don't want to enter more information. We just want to head back to the menu because once we start adding anything more than these LED loops, that's when we're going to start error checking and bricking our computers if we don't know what we're doing. Now, at this stage, we can again go ahead and enter different combinations and stuff to get different solid colors. But... We can see right here, they're flashing and it is really, really cool. Now, do keep in mind, these are diagnostic LEDs. So that means they're not going to have the same lifespan as proper sort of well, LEDs that you would expect on a motherboard. So we'll also do need to make sure that we can actually turn these guys off. Now, thankfully, looking at the software once again, we can actually see that indeed it has the option to go ahead and stop these error testing. Now, if you disable the LEDs by going to option number three, it won't work. It'll just keep flashing because we haven't stopped the error testing. So what we need to do is go ahead and hit number five to stop error testing. Uh, we will go ahead and stop the error testing. Now, it does say that we're going to damage our system. Don't worry too much because we're not actually error checking anything at the moment. All we're doing is cycling the LEDs through the system. We're not checking any errors. So for us, we can basically ignore that. We're going to go and hit Y to continue because we don't want to keep running. Oh, hang on a second. That's... Oh... 
So EOS will hit menu to return back to the menu. Unfortunately, no, you cannot enable LEDs. And it is April Fool's today. If you did notice the uploading, I think because it's based on US time, it's going to say the 31st. But it is April Fool's here in Australia. Happy April Fool's to everyone. Uh, no, you can't actually enable LEDs. So I guess that's about it for this little video. Not too much here. This year, we didn't go ahead and dump water into our computer like we did last year. If you want to check out last year's April Fool's video, you can find it right there. But uh, yeah, LEDs on our motherboard, no it isn't exactly possible to do, unfortunately, that was all trash. But if you still want to go ahead and prank your friends, check that description box because, again, I've left actual uh, everything that I've talked about so far and I've also too left the program that I wrote to do this function down in that description box. Now, if you want to find out more about what actually went into doing this, uh, do check that description box. I think tomorrow's video will be the one where we go out with the uh, behind the scenes and actually show you what we did. It was quite the process. I actually wrote a full program to do the LED thing, so that was pretty amusing to see. Um, but overall, yeah, there is no way to enable LEDs on your motherboard. So, guys, thanks all for watching. Let me know down in that comment sections whether you like this year's April Fools or you liked last year's one better. Personally, I like this one because everyone likes some LEDs, but didn't exactly work. So, with that being said, let me know down in that comment sections. Thanks all for watching, and I will catch you all in the next one. Cycling LED effect. We're going to hit enter, it's going to load up, and boom! Would you look at that? We got some LEDs going on our system.